the EPA has forged ahead under existing legislation, namely the Clean Air Act, uh, in order to produce its greenhouse gas reporting rule. So I've summarized some of the key features of the reporting rule here. It would apply, or it does apply, to emitters of over 25,000 um, tons of CO2 equivalents per year. Uh, those impacted facilities were required to start monitoring their emissions at the beginning of this year. Their first reports will be due March 31st, 2011, and they are required to self-certify with the EPA uh, verifying all submitted data. So now in Canada, we, we also have a federal emissions reporting uh, program. The reporting threshold is quite a bit higher than that shown for the EPA's rule. Um, our reporting threshold is 50,000 tons of CO2 equivalents per year. Uh, at the provincial level, BC, Alberta, and Ontario all have uh, reporting programs. Each has uh, its own reporting threshold. I should point out that the Alberta system is the only one that attaches a, uh, an emissions reduction target to that reporting program. So there's the expectation that those facilities that are reporting will reduce their, uh, their emissions intensity by 12%. Looking a little bit closer to home, um, in May of 2009, the, uh, the province of Saskatchewan announced its uh, emissions reduction target. So I've shown that in the upper left-hand box there. 20% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions versus 2006 levels by the year 2020. And at the time that that, that goal was unveiled, that was consistent with Canada's national target. So also in May 2009, the province introduced Bill 95 to the legislature. And basically that bill outlines the province's plan for achieving the 20% uh, emissions reduction target. So I've provided a very, very simplistic view of Bill 95 on the right-hand side of the screen. In a nutshell, um, regulated or uh, facilities that are participating in the program uh, would be required to submit their baseline emissions to the minister for approval. Thereafter, they would uh, be expected to reduce their annual emissions by a prescribed amount below the baseline. And of course, they would be required to report on their emissions each year. Uh, the plan also includes a um, a built-in compliance mechanism whereby facilities that fail to meet their targets would be required to make a compliance payment. Here's a slide that uh, often tends to cause a bit of a stir. Despite the absence of emissions reduction legislation in the US, uh, climate change cases have already started to work their way into the court system. So in the first case, uh, eight states in New York City filed a suit against several power companies claiming that the greenhouse gas emissions of those companies constituted a public nuisance. So the plaintiffs in this case um, seek an injunction that would require the defendants to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions by a certain amount each year for the next 10 years. Now in the second case, uh, private property owners along the Mississippi Gulf Coast filed a suit against 147 uh, power, oil, and chemical companies. Um, and it was their claim that the greenhouse gas emissions from these 147 companies um, contributed to rising sea levels, which um, allowed Hurricane Katrina to become unusually destructive. So uh, the plaintiffs in this case are seeking compensation for uh, property damage. Now, both of these cases were um, dismissed by district courts. However, in September and October of last year, those decisions were overturned by federal courts of appeal, so they will actually be allowed to proceed to trial. Now, regardless of the outcome of these cases, um, they may very well represent sort of the first wave of litigation against greenhouse gas emitters. 